recording. There we go. OK. So we kind of started exploring how to texture, right? And in this case, uh, I do want to go to my crab gear, turn the eyeball off for crab gear right there, right? That way we can focus just on the body, right? And we've already seen how we could plug in our different shader node networks and all that stuff. I want to now go to the texture paint menu here, right? So see how I can actually go to the texture paint, uh, not menu, but workspace, right? Now you'll notice that you actually have a 2D painting space as well as a 3D painting space. We'll explore this much later on, uh, but I'm going to kind of move, right? Remember, you can put your cursor right here, and you can kind of slide it over. I really want most of the space dedicated to just the actual 3D painting. So remember, you can always make this 2D painting window much smaller so it's largely out of the way, right? Uh, maybe maybe kind of give it just space so we can see the image up there. All right. So now what I want to do is I also want to change my shading type from the normal kind of flat shading, right? There's kind of the normal, not flat shading, but it's kind of like a regular shading. Um, it just shows the straight color map without any material preview. So remember, there's wireframe, there's regular shaded, and then the one next to it that kind of looks more like the material ball. It's kind of like a, a ball, but it's got like a checkerboard slight look to it. If you click on that, that's material preview. That shows you your normal mapping, any other map types. Uh, basically, it's Eevee. It's using Eevee for rendering, uh, which is really, really cool. So we want that. We, of course, want to go down to the kind of uh, red ball down here, right? Remember, in our properties area, we have this red ball, right? This red ball. If we click on that, it brings up the material controls. And you see how it is for crab body. So once you've got a specific control attached to an object, and that object is selected, right? For mode to select object. See the object selected up here. Um, when you click on your material, it's going to show the crab body material. Uh, technically, you can click on this and you see the other ones. So remember that uh, kind of little ball pull down menu? You will see the other ones, but we want crab body, and that's what we have. Now, just like we actually plugged in a map for our uh, UV distortion. Right, the base color is right here, kind of towards the top. It's kind of the one that's got like a, a white bar. If you click on that white bar, you can of course pick a specific color for the material itself. But I want to paint a texture. So instead of clicking on the bar itself, you see there's this yellow dot, right? It's yellowish dot. If you click on that, remember it brings this up. And there's a lot of options in here, but we want image texture, right? We want image texture. So I click on that. And it does become black for the moment. And remember, this is where we would click on new to create that UV grid, right? So this is actually something we've done and seen in videos before. So I'm going to click on new. And this time, though, I want to actually give this a name. So I'm going to title it. I'll call it uh, crab body color. And I want higher resolution, so I'm going to go and do like a 2048. Remember, this is going to show up on both sides, right? We sacrificed asymmetry to kind of make our texture the same on both sides, and that way this 2048 will actually act and look like a 4096. I also want to make sure to pick a color here, so I can click on color. And right now it's set to black, so you can actually see the little slider here from black to kind of white. I can click on the middle there, and now you see we get the full color spectrum. And I can easily just kind of pick maybe a greenish color, whatever crab color you want, but I'll go with green, maybe a slight, slightly darker green. So remember, this will pick your color, but this also kind of picks your lightness for the texture, right? And we want generated type blank, right? Because we're just creating a, a color texture. So I'll hit OK. And now you can see we've got our actual color texture here. Uh, I would probably make sure that it's also the texture active over here. Right? So you see if I kind of pull this over, we can kind of see a little bit more of what's going on here. And I can just click on that, right? And eventually when this catches up, <laughs> it should show up. There should be crab body color right there. And then you can see the, the color here. So make sure here, usually I, I kind of like to have it on. But also, if and when we go to paint mode, right, which is 8, right? The quick key 5 is for sculpting, right? 8 is for texture painting. In fact, if you go right here, you see we can click on uh, the texture paint. You see there's texture paint mode, 8. So we're actually already in texture paint mode. What I could do now that I've got a texture plugged in is I can go to that wrench and screwdriver up here, the, the white at the very top. And you'll notice here 
it's not actually seeing all of our map types, right? So it's probably not a bad idea to make sure that I have um, this image saved. So I go to image, save, right? We can even save as to give it a proper name, body color BNG. There we go. And then you'll see it here. So usually when you first create that texture, you'll probably need to go to image here and go to save or save as to give it a name that you want. Um, just so that it's properly saved in here. Now, if you go to File, you'll see there is an area called External Data. And you see I've got it checked on to automatically pack in the Blender file. That means when I start to save my Blender file, this texture will be in there. That does mean you do have to save the image periodically as you're working, right? Image, save, right? Alt-S is the quick key for it. So those are some of those little things you need to do. But once you've saved this image, You'll see it actually in the uh, kind of uh, white screwdriver wrench. You'll see it actually shows up here. So you can actually switch between your different maps here. In this case, I only have two, the normal map and the uh, body color. You also see that you have your controls down here for color paint, right? And you'll see there's kind of this white bar right here. If I click on that, it brings this up so I can pick a color. But you also see there's an eyedropper, right? There's an eyedropper. And I can just kind of sample that green. And now what I could do is I could always just turn the kind of uh, little white bar here at the side up, right? So you see how there's kind of this little bar right here at the side that kind of goes from white to black. If you drag that up, it lightens the color, but I could also just move this color a little more towards the center to make that green kind of a more light green. Because the thing is we want color variation for this, right? And oftentimes, you kind of have the lighter colors on the bellies of animals and creatures, right? Either sometimes just through natural camouflaging, right, and genetic mutations, but also um, sometimes through weathering, right? Like you notice on your own body where, you know, your, your arm that's on the side of your car gets uh, darker because some sun tanning, and then it's kind of a little lighter underneath, right? So these are some of those little things that you have to kind of look out for, and we're going to keep reviewing these and do more lectures on them, of course. Uh, by default, the draw brush is on right up here. So you see we kind of have our major brushes right here. Draw brush is what we want. I don't want the strength to be this high, though. And I usually don't need the pressure uh, sensitive on for right now. If you have a Wacom tablet, that is very cool and useful. But since I'm doing this with the mouse uh, at school here, <laughs> right, um, uh, you know, I'm going to have that off. But I do want the strength a lot lower because I want this to be subtle. I want to be able to paint a little bit and then paint a little more to kind of build it up, right? It's better to put on a little too, uh, not enough, and then be able to add more to it than to take away, right? It's always better to kind of add than subtract um, often. The other thing we need to be aware of is that fall off is way over here. And this, of course, uh, applies to your sculpting tools as well. There's an area called fall off right next to stroke right here. And what I can do is I can go in and I go to custom and I can pick smoother. And that's just going to kind of give the edge of the brush a softer quality, right? So I do like fall off smoother to give the kind of edge of the brush a softer quality. Now, one of the other things that we need to really think about, come on, don't disconnect, is our symmetry up here, right? There is symmetry still on, right? See how my X is still on? Now, that's great for sculpting, and if you were painting with uh, totally unique UVs that weren't mirrored on top of each other, um, this would also be cool. But I have found that when you have UVs that are on top of each other so that your uh, texture is already going to have symmetry because of that, one, you don't need this. Two, it can actually do weird stuff. I've actually found sometimes it project paints weird on the parts you don't want it to. So I actually find that if you've got UVs that are overlapping so that you're already going to have symmetry texturing without this, turn it off. Right? For us, we're going to turn it off. Also, another thing to be aware of is it's pretty dark underneath the belly. So if you actually go to the little V over here, right? it's kind of right up where we have our display bu uh, buttons. right? If you click on this little V, you'll see that there's some options. In particular, there's one that's, that's a globe right? that's called world space lighting. And when we turn this off, what happens is, is the light kind of follows the camera now. So you see how you kind of always kind of have decent light where you're painting. 
The nice thing is that's a toggle that you can turn off and on pretty easily. So now I want to make my brush a little bigger. Uh, remember, right and left bracket will do that, but also S and drag left to right. So you just hit S, drag left to right. That'll control the brush size. But also your right and left brackets can do that as well. And now you can see with the color map selected here, and we made sure to save it over there, right? So it's properly saved. A low strength brush. Hold on. Hello? I do. Yes. All right. All right, uh, Xander, uh, you need to go to J5 with your device and your charger. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Sorry for the interruption. <laughs> uh, all right. So just some of these preliminary things we need to kind of do to start to set this up. Um, obviously, like I've told you guys before, B Painter is not a free add-on, but it definitely gives you a great layer system that makes some of this process a bit easier. So what I can do now with this lower strength, the image is kind of in and selected, is I can just start to left-click drag, and you see how it starts to paint? And you see how it's particularly allowing us to project these pixels right onto the part of the model we want to have paint with, right? And so what we can easily do is just go in here, and you see how I can kind of slowly build it up? And I can just kind of give the body, the bottom here, a bit of a uh, softer color. Um, if I want, I could fade this a little bit into here as well. And once again, remember that um, if I go to Edit Preferences, right? Uh, navigation, I've got that orbit around selection on right here, right? And you notice as I paint, it's kind of setting the focus of my camera rotation on the area I'm painting. And that is super, super cool, right? So this is actually one of those neat things that works for sculpting, it works for painting, it works for all of our normal stuff. So what we could do is we could just kind of paint in here and slowly kind of build it up. Uh, you do want to be careful the view you're painting from, right? Because it is projecting on there, so you might get some slight weird issues like that sometimes. Uh, that's just part of the nature of projection, right? Because it's painting from the camera itself onto the model. But you see that's also really cool that it's painting from the camera right onto the model. So you just kind of rotate around and paint, and you see how it's easier to just kind of build up as you go? So it's always better to kind of start with a low strength and then you paint more and more on there to slowly build it up. And so we can kind of have it fade a little bit too so it's a little bit more of a subtle transition to different parts. Now as you're painting and you start to get what you like from this painting, right? You'll notice if I go over to here to the image, there's a little asterisk now, right? If I click on that, I can go to save and it just saves that. Of course, I can hit Control S to save my Blender file as well. And the TV is actually staying on, which is great. <laughs> um, maybe it'll work well for us again for a while <laughs> until we have a better solution. So these are some of the cool things that you could start to actually do with your painting. Now, of course, I could go and pick a very different color for the shell. So if I wanted to, uh, remember, we're using the uh, wrench and screwdriver here, right? And uh, it's at the very top, the white wrench and the screwdriver, because it kind of shows us our brush painting stuff, our textures that we can paint. I'm going to go down here. I'm going to pick a kind of brownish color, right? Kind of go right into kind of more of that. Darken it, right? Remember, there is the color picker here, right? But there's also this kind of little white to black bar on the side that's kind of like your darkness or lightness value for it. So I get a darker color there. Now at this point, I want the strength to be uh, heavy. So I'm going to go to uh, 100. And then you'll see I can just kind of start to paint a very different colored shell on here. So you see how strength kind of definitely has a, an effect on what you want to do? But you can also see one of the really, really cool things is that 
we're painting color on a model where we want the color to go, right? And you see how it's actually painting into our 2D texture here? So this is actually very, very cool. Now, there is a really neat feature that I want to show you guys. I'm just kind of showing you guys that you can manually paint this as well. But believe it or not, and I'm going to save that really quick. Remember, image save. Ah, and there it went disconnect, of course. All right, let me see if I can uh, disconnect and reconnect. Try this one more time. Hopefully we can get at least another minute out to show this other thing. <laughs> see if it works for us. Okay. So at least it's back up. Let's see if it's going to... Okay. It seems to be working. So let's hope that we can get at least another minute or two out of this. Um, one of the things that you can actually do with Blender is I can go to three... Actually, in this case, I'm going to go to two for edge mode, right? Two for edge mode. Although, in this case, because I do have a seam here, right? See how I created a, a mark seam here? Believe it or not, if I go to three for face mode and I select a face, and then I do select linked, right? It actually selects linked based just on that island, which is kind of neat. But if I wanted it maybe to not quite go to here, but maybe here, if I go to two for edge mode, right? Remember two for edge mode, I could double left click to select that edge loop, right? So remember double left click to select that edge loop. There is a tool in the select menu, select loops, select loop inner region, right? Select, select loops, select loop inner region. And what it does is it selects the less amount of polygons, right? The least amount of polygons on the side of an edge loop. So you see how this will actually select just those polygons? So you get some really, really cool selection tools in Blender. And if I hit eight again, right? Eight is the quick key for texture paint, eight. I can go there and I can actually turn on right up here next to texture paint. You see how there's kind of what looks like a polygon selection method? right here it's kind of in the between view and texture paint if I click this on this is called paint mask and you notice how all of a sudden the rest of the models grayed out except for that selection so you do need to go to three uh, and have some faces selected right whichever way you get them selected and then when you come back to eight for texture paint mode you can click on that one right there and it masks based on that selection you could then go to fill bucket Right, you notice a couple down here is fill bucket. And I'm going to kind of uh, click on this uh, white bar here, go to the eyedropper, sample that brown. So I've got that brown for uh, great uh, for fill bucket as well. And you notice I can click on here and it fills that color based off of the selection mask. So when you actually want to be able to fill in a whole section, just select the polygons turn this guy on right here, fill mask, it's right there, and then you can use your fill bucket. And you see how now that gives us our actual shell texture for color painting. Now, of course, I'm going to go up to image here, save. Of course, I can hit control S to save the whole scene. And you see how we can actually kind of get this running and doing stuff for us, right? The nice thing is we only had a 30 second disconnect, which is cool, so... Some minor interruptions for phone calls and this disconnect, but you know we're actually able to do a decent lecture today uh, and capture it in video form. So this could be used in all kinds of other ways, right? Uh, so I can go to two for edge mode again. And if I want to, right? Remember, there is that ability to go in here and say uh, double left click on this edge loop, right? And then I could go to select menu, select loops, select loop inner region and you see how it just selects those polygons there i can go to three for face mode technically it'll work for edge mode though too but just on the safe side eight for texture paint mode right although remember that is right here there's that pull down menu you see there's a quick key eight for it and there's a little kind of box right next to texture paint that's mask 
And since my fill bucket's still on, and I've already got the color I like, and I can make it a darker color for the claws, right? Remember, you can take the color you already have, and there's this little slider on the side that you could slide down to make it darker or lighter, right? It's kind of that white to gray, white on the top, kind of gray to black on the bottom. And I could fill that. I could then go back to two for edge mode, go to the other side, double left click on that edge loop, select loops, select loop inner region. This is actually a useful tool. I actually have my own quick key mark for it, right? It doesn't have a default one. Z is not the default one. I made that one for it because I use it a lot. Select loop inner region, right? And it kind of selects the side of the edge loop that has less polygons. So it's great for selecting whole limbs. Three for face mode, eight for texture paint. Mask is still on. So I just go in there and add that, right? So you can leave the mask on and then make your different selections and then fill bucket with that mask. So that's kind of neat. Of course, we can turn that off. And I can easily uh, go back to regular painting. So I go back to my draw brush. And if I want, I can click on this, grab the color picker, kind of sample that. And I can just manually do a little bit of painting here, right? So you could always just manually paint the rest of it. But that can allow you to do a big fill for most of what you want here. And then we can just kind of manually go in and kind of do the rest where we need a little more control, right? Remember, you can make your brush size smaller with the left and right bracket keys. And you see how that fill can be a great way to fill most of it and then say, hey, these are the areas where I want to get in and be more precise, right? So it feels great for doing large chunks of it, but there's often still going to be kind of an area where you need to get in and do a little bit of manual painting, right? Because these we want to kind of have their own precision at the pixel level, right? This is what this painting allows us to do, paint at the level of pixels. So I could say, hey, I'm going to have it be this color here, this color there. And you see how now we have kind of a nice little bit of extra claw there. So very, very cool how we can actually do that. I'm going to go over here and kind of do the same thing. And I'm going to keep showing this, right? We're going to use some more fill bucket and masking on some other parts as we go. Because they're darn useful and quite cool, right? But we can also see that sometimes it's as simple as just getting in here and kind of doing our normal painting. And you notice how all of this stuff can just be done with normal painting? It's just, it's just that fill bucket is pretty cool at doing this. Now you see how it's kind of a little bit too much there, right? You can kind of see how that went a little over, kind of right there. Remember, you can always go back to click on this. And it gives you the eyedropper, and I could sample this green. And then we can kind of come in here and just paint that back out, right? And now you can see we've got this kind of nice little kind of different coloring on the bottom here, a bit of a different coloring on the shell, right? We've got some nice kind of lower color painting right here. Oh, yep. So I'm just going to go to Image. Save. Remember, there's a quick key for it, Alt-S. And then, of course, I can hit Control-S for the regular Blender save. And remember, in File, I've got external data set to automatically pack, so this texture file is in the Blender file. So if you move your Blender file to a different computer or whatever, all the texture stuff will still be in there. All right. I feel like that's a great place to stop this recording.